Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll see one more session in operating system that is address binding. So in our previous session, we have seen the introduction to memory management where we have seen a different types of memories. And then we have seen the logical address and physical address, the difference between the logical and the physical addresses. So the address where the process stores in the secondary memory, we call it as a logical address and the address where the process stores in the main memory is called the physical address. And also we have seen and if any, any process wants to be get executed, that will be done only through the CPU and only through the main memory. Okay, so the uh, the process the CPU can't access the process from the secondary memory directly. So the logical address will be converted to the physical address. So this process we call it as an address binding. So without delay, let's start the session. Address binding. So here uh, the name itself indicates mapping of instructions and data mapping of instructions and data okay from secondary memory because all the programs will be resides in the secondary memory secondary memory to primary memory so obviously if any pro process wants to be get executed that should be first loaded into the primary primary memory so this is called as a address binding so there are three categories of address bindings so one is a compile time address binding compile time address binding and the second one load time address binding and the third one execution time execution time or we can also call it as run time address binding so the address binding means just a mapping of instructions and data from secondary memory to primary memory so the conversion of a logical address to the physical address simply we can say if the same thing happens during the compile time we call it as a compile time binding if it doesn't happens then it have to wait until it comes to the load loading so if the same process done during the load load time okay during the loading linking and loading so then it is called as a load time and even during the execution, if the process wants to be moved from one memory to another memory, then we can call it as an execution time. So here, it will generate absolute code. So if, if we know the memory where the process resides exactly, okay, during the compile time, then it is called as an absolute code. And if we don't know, the exact location where the process is moving so then it have to wait until the load time so here we will call it as a relocatable code relocatable code okay so these are the three categories of address binding simply the conversion of logical logical to physical so consider one program okay any consider any c program a C programming or Python or whatever it may be, right? It consider any program. So it will be having a lot of instructions and data, right? So I'll show you. For example, if there is a program, so this program will be having the instructions obviously there will be some instructions and also some data okay some data initializations okay initializations so that will be the data and instructions and also predefined functions so we will be using a lot of predefined functions for example in c if you want to uh, work with the strings there are a lot of string handling functions there are predefined functions so we are supposed to uh, uh, insert 
the i mean we have to include the string.h header file right so predefined functions will be there and also we will be having the user defined functions user defined functions so these are the functions which we are going to write in the program outside the main function so these are all the things which will be available in the program so first the program is called as a source program yes yeah source program so this source program will be given to the compiler so whatever it may be not only the compiler we can call it as a translator okay so either it can be compiler or interpreter or assembler whatever it may be so it will convert into the machine code so obviously the result is a object code object code so sometimes we can also call it as an object module okay object module and this object code will be given to linker sorry linker what is this linker so as the name itself indicate it links all other object files what are the all other object files we are going to use a lot of predefined functions here we are going to use a lot of predefined functions so these predefined functions object code will be available in the header files for example string reverse str rev string reverse so this function object code will be available in string.h for example string length str len so this object code will be available in string.h okay similarly power function this object code will be available in math.h so all those object codes of these particular predefined functions will be linked into our program so other object files other object files other object files will be linked here after that we will be getting executable code executable code so which is ready to execute okay which is ready to execute and from this executable code so if it is if it generates the executable code so what happens the next one is ready to execute okay that was that will be given to the processor and the processor will execute the code so this will be given to the loader so we know loader means it will load the program to the main memory because only the main from the main memory only the cpu will execute the code right so it will be given <coughs> loader and from that loader and uh, there will be program in memory so the program will be loaded into the memory and here there will be one more thing uh, that is uh, dynamical load executable libraries okay so there will be there will be some sort of uh, libraries which can be included during this process and i mean the, during the runtime so for example in c language there is a concept called dynamic memory location so dynamic memory location means during the runtime the memory will be allocated so that type of things will be happens here okay so here see this process is called as a compile time address binding so here itself uh, we will be knowing uh, the the where the exact position where the source code will be copied the process will be copied okay the process will be moved into the memory and if it doesn't happens here the next process is here it is a load time load time so it have to wait until it comes to loader so till here it will be waiting and he, and this here it will be uh, I mean, the process will be loaded into the main memory. Okay, and the next one is the last one. This is the executable time. Executable time. So, if the process doesn't uh, allocate, I mean, the memory was not allocated to the process where exactly resides in the main memory in compile time or load time, then during the runtime or during the execute, execution the process will be moved into the main memory so best example is a dynamic memory allocations in c program 
okay so this process we call it as a address binding that means so only one uh, concept behind this address binding means the cpu only execute the process and the, the cpu will execute the process only from the main memory so even though the processes are uh, waiting in the uh, i mean residing in the secondary memory that should be loaded into the main memory for execution and also whatever the user defined functions which are written in programs so that will be residing in the secondary memory and whenever the program executes here so it will be calling these user defined functions from the user defined uh, from the secondary memory to the main memory so in order to save the memory uh, save the memory or uh, uh, memory efficiency so these these user defined functions we can sometimes we can also call them as a routines so these such type of functions will be available in the secondary memory so obviously we know that if the user defined function th that will be executed only if there is an function call so if there is an function call immediately the corresponding user defined function will be loaded from the secondary memory to the main main memory so until the user call the i mean the function call the user defined functions will be residing only in the secondary memory so such things will be done during the executable time right so hope you understood this uh, address binding and uh, if you are having any queries regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much